A Montreal city councillor has just stepped down as the city's reconciliation advisor. The problem? Well, she could be Canada's Elizabeth Warren. Marie-José Perrant was elected to Montreal City Council in 2017 as the first Indigenous woman elected to hold such a position. She has said publicly that she is Mi'kmaq on her father's side and Acadian on her mother's. Except, as it turns out, at least according to genealogical research conducted by Eric Pouliot Tisdale, she may not be Indigenous after all. Pouliot Tisdale used church records to trace Perrant's genealogy and found that she had no Indigenous ancestors on her father's side, despite her claims. A separate genealogical examination done by Dominique Richeau came to the very same conclusion. However, he did find an Indigenous ancestor on Perrant's mother's side. However, before Perrant puts her moccasins back on, this maternal Mi'kmaq relative is 12 generations back, which makes any DNA contribution less than negligible. And this person is someone that Perrant didn't even know existed when she was first staking her false claim to Indigenous ancestry. For context, Focahontas, Elizabeth Warren, may or may not have an Indigenous ancestor six to ten generations back, making her maybe one 1,024th First Nations. Perrant is even less than that at 12 generations back. Now, according to Ancestry.com, at seven generations back, the DNA footprint is less than 1%. And yet, Perrant managed to land herself some pretty high-profile social justice positions. She was a director with Destinations. That's an organization that says they're working towards reconciliation with and teaching about Indigenous cultures. And that was before she was elected as the quote-unquote first Indigenous councillor in the city of Montreal and then became a media darling who was then appointed to the high-profile role of reconciliation and cultural outreach point woman, a role she has now sadly resigned. Now, this is from the CBC article about the scandal describing what Perrant said when she was confronted with this information. Perrant said, without wanting to go into detail, that the information doesn't align with documents her family has. She said the post, that's the one made by a genealogical researcher, was extremely hurtful and she called it a form of lateral violence. She said her family's situation is not easy to understand. They don't know which community they're from and have yet to finish their family tree. My goal has never been to hurt anyone or to make people feel uncomfortable because of this process. It's something that is important to my family, she said. It was a part of oral tradition, a part of something that my family needed and that I needed and it's not finished yet. Perrant is throwing her parents under the bus here for passing on this oral tradition to her, which becomes a bit of a constant theme when the backgrounds of people like Perrant are finally revealed. In fact, there's a lot of commonality going on here when we examine some of the more notable cases of stolen ethnic identity. Now, I guess the most high-profile incident of this is the aforementioned Elizabeth Warren because, well, she sort of wants to be the leader of the free world these days. She claimed Indigenous heritage for years, even identifying herself as American Indian on her state bar of Texas registration card and at her job at Harvard Law School after a DNA test revealed that she was less First Nations than much of the American population. Warren blamed her parents for passing along the false oral family history to her. Then there was the fake African-American activist Rachel Dolezal, who used her co-opted black identity to become the head of the Spokane chapter of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. You see, she's advancing them by stealing their jobs. And closer to home, there's Miriam Monsef. She was celebrated as the first Afghan refugee appointed to cabinet. However, it was eventually uncovered that she was not born in Afghanistan, but rather Iran and spent much of the first decade of her life in Iran. And just like Perrant and Liz Warren before her, Monsef blamed her mom when the truth finally came to light. 
Look at this. For years, Ms. Monsef's mother allowed her daughter to misrepresent her birthplace as she built a political base in Peterborough, including a failed run for mayor in 2014 and her successful win in last year's general election. Her mother was in the House of Commons in January when Ms. Monsef delivered her maiden speech in which she spoke about being born in a, quote, place at war where human rights were not respected where educating women was not allowed, end quote. And there are reports now that a lot of people, including Monsef herself, were very aware that Monsef's origin story was false for a very long time, but they let it slide. But getting back to Perrant, she's the end product of left-wing identity politics. It's the opposite of meritocracy. She's from an ideology that espouses that who and what you are matters rather than what you've done. Being of a certain ethnicity does not make you more special or a personal story more compelling or relevant. However, it appears that Perrant, while well, she's just a regular old white lady just like me, not that there's anything wrong with that. Perrant has accomplished a lot and she's done a lot for Indigenous culture and Indigenous people. And that should have been good enough for her. But what's the moral of the story here? I guess when society has made being oppressed a form of virtue that garners special treatment and accolades, more people are going to take shortcuts and then just claim that oppression is theirs. And the people that are hurt when this happens, well, they're the ones who have overcome real oppression, poverty, discrimination, and bigotry. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. At The Rebel, we are proudly and fiercely independent. We will never take a dime from Justin Trudeau or any government since it's our job to hold the government to account on behalf of the people. Now, one of the best ways to support us is to treat yourself to a Rebel subscription. You'll get access to all of our premium content, including my really excellent Wednesday night show, The Gun Show. Just go to premium.rebelnews.com to get your Rebel subscription today.